Hi, everybody. Welcome to our channel, our Scientology stories, Peeling the Onion. My name is Mark Fisher, and I've been flying solo for the last three weeks and doing various different videos and interviews and things like that. And I hope that you've enjoyed them. But we have a special return of our co-host, and that's Janice Gillum Grady. Hi, Janice. How you doing? Hi, Mark. G'day, everyone. It's I've missed you all. Um, ahoy! Ahoy, man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's been fun, but I have missed talking to everyone and chatting and getting emails from people and phone calls, so I've missed that. It's nice to be home. Well, well, it's good to have you back, and uh, this is going to be a fun little broadcast here where we're going to take people through uh, slides, pictures of your from your adventures, uh, your yep. friends, and tell some stories. And then also, everybody, if you want to get in the chat, I'll put comments up and also questions. If you've got questions, please write the word question above. It makes it easier to spot. But uh, also, I wanted to mention, too, that we are live streaming on two channels. We're live streaming on Our Scientology Stories, Peeling the Onion, and also on my second channel, which is Mark Fisher's Las Vegas Travel and More. And if you would, it would help me uh, if you've got a second window or a second device, if you could open up this video, uh, uh, welcoming Janice back and just uh, watching it on there as well. It helps me. I'm trying to uh, get, increase the channel. We've got almost 500 subscribers and I've got a long way to get to 4,000 hours of viewing time. So anyway, if you would open up a second, somebody suggested you could do a second window or whatever and just watch it on there. I would appreciate it. And uh that's that would help out a lot too so anyway anyway janice uh we want to welcome you everybody back welcome you back we're also going to do a merchandise giveaway we're going to do a an autographed copy of janice's book and we'll do that right before we go to question and answer so stick around for that and you'll have a chance to win an autographed copy of janice's book here it is right here Janice Commodore's Messenger, book one, Child Adrift in the Sea Organization. Or if you already have book one, we'll give you book two. So you have a choice of either one, right, Janice? Yes, that's right, Mark. <laughs> I haven't said that in a while. I, I know. <laughs> you, yeah, you pull one out of that. <laughs> anyway, welcome back, everybody, and welcome, Janice. And uh, we will go ahead and get started. And Janice, why don't you tell a little bit about how the, the trip came about in the first place, the cruise and the trip and how it all got organized? Well, first, Mark, I want to just thank you for holding the fort while I was gone. I haven't caught oh, up that's on, no problem. I haven't <laughs> caught up on everything, but what I have seen, you did a real good job. And I've had many comments about how great you are with all the questions and because you ask questions that people want to ask, you know, so it's, it's good. So thank you for doing that. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy asking questions. I also got interviewed too. Apostate Alex interviewed me and so did John Poe. I see Poe on the go is in the chat. So welcome uh, uh, John Poe. He did a great job as well interviewing me. And uh, so it was fun being on the other end where I'm being interviewed rather than doing all the uh, question answers and everything. So anyway, um, as I said before, what, you know, how did this all come about? Like, you know, you organized this up a while ago, right? Yeah, I did. But what happened was Louise Quirion, who was on the ship with me, she, she told me that she was going on this cruise and the different ports that she was going to, but she was starting in Southampton and staying on longer. So that's when I was like, ding, 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 you know, uh, <laughs> let me put something together. So I called Cheryl because we'd been planning on doing a trip to Panama, a cruise to Panama. I said, hey, this is this a is great Cheryl trip. Detchef. Cheryl yeah. Detchef, yeah, who's, who's become my, my travel companion. We did Greece last year together, and then we did a seven-week road trip together, and then we just did this one. And then I contacted the people who did the Greece trip with me to see, hey, you guys want to join us? Anyway, we ended up with um, – people that did Greece with me and some that didn't, but that wanted to go because these were, this cruise was hitting some of the old stomping grounds that the Apollo had sailed to. So we ended up with um, 14 of us total on this trip. And we I'll, also, I'll go ahead and start, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to start yeah. showing photos whenever you're ready. Well, we had an amazing deal from Norwegian uh, cruise line and it included our airfare and 
you know, I flew from Las Vegas to Montreal to Lisbon and then Barcelona to Newark to, to Vegas. It was a great, easy trip, but um, yeah, flight was included. So there, there's um, five of us arriving from Las Vegas and Lisbon. You can see Tom Provenzano and his girlfriend, Sita, and there's Cheryl on the left and me, and that, that little gray mark behind my head, that's Spanky. Uh, there she is. <laughs> and yeah, there's Spanky, yeah. Just so people know, Spanky has MS. So she got this little scooter, mm -hmm. which folds up like the transformer, and you can just wheel it along, or, you know, she zooms around the airport in it and went out, you know, in different ports and stuff and zoomed mm -hmm. around the ship on her little scooter. It was great. Yeah, it's actually a pretty cool scooter. I took you guys to the airport, and it's. I was like, scooter, usually you see them hanging off the back of cars. No, no, this one's compact like a suitcase. It yeah. compacts down, and it's it's electronic or whatever, and she just gets on it, and she can scoot along. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it definitely enabled her to do this trip and get around and see things. It was really good. That's great. Yeah. And then here's 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 the cruise bunch or the trip bunch, a bunch of them, right? Is that all of them? Yeah. No, well Louise is missing from this picture. I don't know what mm -hmm. happened. Oh, she was she was on a conference call so she couldn't make the photo, but the rest of us um are all there. Uh, I can name everyone off from Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the front left, that's Lynn Lenny Visk. I knew Lynn on the Apollo. She came it must have been 69 or something like that. Anyway, she, so I've known Lenny for well over 50 years, and her husband is in the back in the red uh, vest. You can see him back there. And they actually went on this trip because 50 years ago, they got married in Lisbon. So this was the celebration of the 50th anniversary. And right behind um, Lenny is Liz Gable House. She was on the ship with us. And behind her is Tom Provenzano. And then next to Tom on the right in front of Bob, this Glenn's husband is Sita. And then coming that's, back. That's Tom's girlfriend. Yes. And then coming back down in the, in the very middle, that's Jacqueline O'Shaughnessy. In, um, in the white hair. In the white, well, gray hair, white hair. Yeah. Um, Jacqueline, I've known uh, since the late 1990s, she was a loan officer with Paul and I, and uh, we've stayed in touch ever since. And she came to Greece with me last year and had such a blast that she came on this trip and she's coming on on the next one. So she's back home working now to make more money <laughs> to uh, go again. <laughs> and then in the front in the flowery long dress, of course, that's me. <laughs> and... Um, Next to me in the white pants is Cheryl Detchev. Uh, just so some people know and understand, Cheryl's husband had known my husband since they were like 19, 20 years old. And they both passed away within two months of each other. So with the both of us being widowed, we, that's where it was like, let's go out and make our own memories without the boys. So that's what we're doing. And then next to Cheryl on the right corner is Tracy, Tracy Lynn. She is the girlfriend of Michael Laws. They live in Texas. And you can see Michael there in the back in the blue shirt. And in front of him, right next to Tracy, is Spanky Taylor. And Spanky I've known since, oh, 1973 when I first visited Celebrity Center. She was working as a public relations person for my mother and took me to my first concert of three dog night. So and there's a question. There's a question from Peter Anderson. Is that Spanky uh, that's credited with introducing church of Scientology to Priscilla Presley and John Travolta? Yes, that is the Spanky. <laughs> Spanky <laughs> Taylor. Featured. Yes. Spanky Taylor of Hollywood. And she was featured in the uh, in the uh, uh, Going Clear documentary on HBO as well. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, um, and right. then then behind Spanky to on the left, next to Jacqueline, is Al uh, Oliver, and that's Jacqueline's boyfriend. And he he's originally from Hawaii, 
but he works here in Las Vegas. And then in the very back in the middle is Stu Moreau, and Stu was on the Apollo. He was like the first mate, and he had various different jobs, but in, he does a lot of construction work, so he came along as well. And it was great actually having the, him there. He was very helpful, you know, helping people and helping Spanky and uh, anyone that needed help. He was very good. He was always there. So that's everyone who went. There was 14 in our group. And there is a map of Portugal, which sits on the east side of the Atlantic Ocean on the west side of Spain. And where we went, we flew into Lisbon, which is where we were to get on the ship, but we arrived in Lisbon two days early so that, right. we'd, get a, so that we'd get a chance to uh, look around and I had been in Lisbon. The last time I was there was 1974. And we sailed when the there was a revolution happening in Lisbon in 74. And the uh, when we sailed, there was military marching into the center of town with carnations on their rifles. And hammer and sickles were being painted on the beautiful statues around town. And it was like, it's time to get out of here. So we pulled up the lines and sailed out and never went back there again. Which, it was one of your favorite ports though, right? <clears throat> yeah, it was because it was, it, was, it was more civilized. And they had English-speaking movies with, with uh, Portuguese subtitles, you know. So that, that was always good. Liberty was easier because you could see movies where in Morocco, they didn't have English movies. It was more French. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I definitely did like Lisbon. So your first stop, Lisbon, and now we've got some pictures from uh, yes. Lisbon right here. Yes. Now we went around, we did a tuk-tuk tour and that's- You weren't are... on the ship yet. You're not on the ship yet, right? No. You're just there, yeah. This is two days before we go on the ship. So this is this Tuk Tuk tour. We had two of them that took us all over Lisbon so we could get to see the sites and then kind of go, okay, where else do we want to go back to? So they took us around. And if the next picture is with our drivers, um, yeah, there was six, seven of us. And that was one of the drivers there. And it also enabled Spanky to get around with us and see the town. Um, in the Tuk Tuk. So that was a lot of fun. And if you go to Lisbon, I definitely advise do the Tuk Tuk tour. It was a lot of fun. And there's the, there's the Lisbon Bridge, which I, as a kid sailing into Lisbon, into the river, was always, I, I used to love that moment of, I'd feel comfort just sailing under that bridge and knowing I was in a real friendly, safe port. So, yeah. And then, and this is a castle that was built in the middle of the river, and then they actually built land out to it because the river was so large. And that was all, that was one of the landmarks I looked for when we'd sail in. I'd be on the bridge with um, with Hubbard, and I'd always look out for this castle. And then there was another there was another statue there of explorers on a ship that I used to. Or, there it is that I used to look out for. Those were, those were just the uh, comforts, comfort is things for me just to see those. Well, and just a little history too for people. Portugal and Spain, they were the ones with all the explorers that you studied in school. You know what I mean? Magellan, you know, circumventing the entire globe, he was Portuguese. And so all these famous explorers, that's how, how why Brazil speaks Portuguese is because Portugal went there and, and uh, you know, took over uh, Brazil and, and, and they were the, they were the famous explorers. So this, uh, this uh, statue here, this is kind of a tribute to all the different explorers. And I think the queen of Portugal at the time, right? Yeah, the, at the top is Prince Henry, who was her son that was out exploring. And then at the bottom, after all these explorers, at the bottom, there's a statue of the queen. Okay. Yeah. Next picture. And there's Janice oh. on her exploring ship. <laughs> 
No, thank you. Well, we on the Tuk Tuk ride, they took us to this museum, a, a um, marine museum, and, the, and it, was, it was the museum. It was the museum which LRH had done a photo shoot at of different uh, ships and so forth, and I'd been with him, and I. I used to want to go and see the rest of the museum and I would take my time during breaks to go to the bathroom so that I could wander through the museum and look at the different things. There was coaches and yeah, ships and there was armor and it was just all like 15th century, 16th century stuff. And it was a fascinating museum for me. So there we were. And so I got a picture of myself there. Fabulous. Oh, and this is, we on the Tuk Tuk, we went up to a peak where we could overlook the water and over, the, and over Lisbon. And a funny story that we joked about afterwards throughout the trip is there was a queen who could not get pregnant. And so she went to a chapel up in this area and there was a chair there, which was the pregnancy chair. Anyway, as a result of going up there, um, she became pregnant. So we kind of joked that it was probably the vicar. <laughs> but they all but, but it was believed that she got pregnant from sitting in the chair. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make a comment about Cheryl, Cheryl Detchef. Okay. I've also I knew her from the time when she got in the C organization in 1978 or whatever, her and Jean in yeah. Clearwater. And Cheryl was, you know, she was uh, in the Commodore's Messenger organization for a long time. She was known really as the commanding officer of Commodore's Messenger Org in New York City in East U.S. for many years. And then she and came then, to the international yeah. base and she was at the international base. And I she worked with me on many projects personnel wise. She was excellent at getting people who are qualified and getting them up to the uh, international base to fill important positions. And so she helped me get people for uh, the cine, cine uh, the, the movie uh, department, and also at the very end before we left for the manufacturing part department, including Mark Headley. She got Mark Headley up to the international base when he was 16 years old. And that was right before we took off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so Cheryl, and then she came after she left her and Jean, they left the Sea Org. They came to Las Vegas and they worked with us in the mortgage company, right, Janice? Yes, for 10 years. But yeah. she was also she was also the commanding officer of the Commodore's Messenger Org in Clearwater for many years. Okay. And and when after Paul and I left, about a month later, she left and then Jean followed her. So there's a lot of a lot of history together with Cheryl. Absolutely. And then yeah. after she, you know, left us in the mortgage, but she became like a big time executive for an accessory store. I think Claire's it was, it's like a chain and she became like, you know, in charge of whole States and things like that for many, many years. And she was very successful at that. And then her and Jean, of course, retired and uh, they were traveling the country and living in Florida and living up in Washington state. And uh, now unfortunately Jean's no longer with us, but uh, Cheryl is a good friend and she comes down and it's great that she gets to spend time with you janice and go on these yeah trips. yeah we have we have fun together <laughs> okay great yeah well, there's the next picture here okay well we went to um the next day after we did the tuk tuk rides uh we went we caught a train and we went out to sintra which is a town outside of lisbon where there was this castle and it was i think there was eight of us because everyone was still arriving or whatever. So uh, we went out to this and it was up on a hill and we had to take a car up there and then keep hiking up the hill further. And then we got to explore the whole castle. And it was raining, right? Obviously you've had an umbrella. <laughs> oh yeah, it was raining. Yeah. That's the group of us. Yeah. Six of us. And then this was back on the Tuk Tuk tour. This was a, a thousand year old wall that uh, Jackie and I were just, it was right across the road, I think, from the pregnancy chair. Oh, and then here, now we're back to uh, Sintra. This was one of the little lookout uh, towers that I was in. 
that looked out down the hill and you could see the whole valley. And just so people know, I put these slides together in as best of order as I could. I wasn't on the trip, but I saw there may be a little bit one here or one there. But anyway, Janice will explain what they are. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, after we went and saw the, the, ca the castle or the palace, we then walked down a ways about 400 meters and then there was a castle there built by the Moors in the 1200s. So we went exploring that. There, there it is going up the wall. You can see Jackie and Al there. That's pretty cool. It's almost like it looks like not the Great Wall of China, but it's sort of like going up the ridge or something, right? Like a wall of yeah. the castle. Yeah, it does. It goes right up the ridge, and it's been there since the 1200s. So it, it was just another fun exploration of the area. Fabulous. Ah, custard pies. Okay. <laughs> Next to the Marine Museum is a big cathedral. And way back, there was monks in this cathedral, and they used to use egg whites to starch their clothes. And they didn't know what to do with the yolks. So they started experimenting, and they came up with custard. And then they used to make custard pies. And so now there's a, it, as part of the cathedral, right next to it is this major operation that makes the original custard pies. And the recipe is kept under lock and key, just kind of like the Coca-Cola <laughs> recipe. And uh, yeah, they were great pies. The our tour guides actually bought a bunch for us so that we could eat them on the tour. That's great. Oh, and then uh, this is photographs I got from Tom, our friend Tom Provenzano. I asked for food uh, photographs. I take food photographs all the time. Yeah, Janice doesn't really take food photographs. Am I, I right, don't. Janice? I do not. <laughs> I thought people would appreciate some photos of the food over there, you know. So anyway, so this was a photograph of, that they took in Lisbon. Of, of This is Tom's lunch of sardines or whatever that is. And then Sita, this was her. She says it's kind of a stew or whatever. I also should mention, too, that Tom's girlfriend, Sita, she's, from, she's Brazilian. She's from Brazil. So she speaks fluent Portuguese, obviously, because she grew up there. So I'm sure th did she translate for you guys when you were there in Lisbon? Yeah, she did. But what was funny, when we f were driving from the airport to our hotel, our driver at first wouldn't talk to her and was acting as if her Portuguese just didn't make sense to him. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're teasing she her. Eating, she was, really? she, was she speaking pidgin Portuguese? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, you're just not important enough for him. <laughs> anyway, Sita's a riot. Sita's a riot. We have a lot of fun with her. She's very funny. Anyway, yeah, she she is. Anyway, she finally just kept talking to him to to the point where he finally answered her <laughs> in Portuguese. <laughs> Okay, great. All right, so we're now we're getting ready uh, to go on the cruise. I've got a picture here of your ship. Tell everybody about your ship. Yes, this is the Norwegian Dawn, and um, I did not get any details on her, so I can't tell you how long she is or anything like that. Well, I meant uh, details the, about your cabins and you know what was on board, things like that. Yeah, um, there was a swimming pool on board, so when it was nice and warm, I would go in the pool and do my 40 laps, and on cold days, you couldn't get me near that pool as we got closer <laughs> to Spain. <laughs> it was too cold. <laughs> and the weather was uh, was relatively warm, pleasant, when you were like in Lisbon and, and down on the rest of the trip? Yeah, on Lisbon, um, well, we had rain in Lisbon. Morocco was good weather. And then Spain, it was a mix because we actually – after Ibiza, we actually hit a storm and we couldn't enter Valencia because of the storm that closed the port. So, and we'd have had to leave the other port early to get out before the storm hit. So, we spent an extra day at sea and missed going to Valencia because of the weather. Right. Yeah. Uh, Donna, Donna, sorry, that just moved on me. Donna Jenkins says, wow, a bit bigger than the Apollo. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's funny, Donna. I would I stood on the dock and I looked up and I go, oh, I think the the folk the um the funnel on the Apollo probably went up to the level of where the lifeboats were. <laughs> You know, which is yeah. like in, in the middle. You can see right yeah. there in the middle. Where the life, is, yeah, the lifeboats. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we, we were, it was definitely small in comparison. Was it packed? Was it crowded? Or I mean, how was it? It wasn't crowded. I mean, they had like 2,000 passengers. Mm -hmm. But it didn't feel crowded. And um, was it easy to get around? Like was, you know, with Spanky on her scooter and, and all that, where was it easy for, you know, people that have handicapped, were they able to get around the ship? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they actually had a system. If, if you're handicapped and needed a wheelchair, you would call and they would send someone up there to get you and then wheel you to wherever you needed to go. So the handicapped didn't have to depend on someone always being with them. Oh, that's nice. That's, yeah, that's it was, good service. Yeah. yeah. And this and they, is Norwegian Norwegian Cruise Lines, right? Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And this was our first stop in, uh, in Tenerife, which is an island that um, we used to go to on the Apollo. Is it part and, of the Canary Islands? Yeah. The, we went to, on this trip, we went to three of the Canary Islands, two of which were old stomping grounds on the Apollo, which was Tenerife and Las Palmas. So that was uh, fun to go there. And I, I joked on Facebook that I was in Las Palmas um, BT hunting. <laughs> and, and why is why is Las Palmas famous for BTs and OT3? Why is that? <laughs> well, that's, that's where Hubbard was when he was researching OT3. And that's where the Avon River and my mother was back in 1967. And Neville Chamberlain was there um, during those days, and Hannah Eltringham, uh, who I have, by the way, I've set up. We've got to do an interview with her on yeah. on some stuff. But anyway, yeah. So Neville was there, and they all had different stories on Las Palmas and LRH's OT3 research. And anybody who is a former Scientologist, if you ever remember the Ron's Journal 67 lecture that, you know, you have to hear and all that, where Ella Rich is talking and there's wind blowing and all that. And I'm on the, you know, an island in Las Palmas. That, that's all in Las Palmas. And that's where he talks about how he's broken through the wall of fire. And that's all in the Canary Islands on Las Palmas. Yeah. And there's a lot of extinct volcanoes in the Canary Islands. Uh, which is also part of the operating Thetan III uh, story with Xenu. How was the uh, um, the islands, the Canary Islands? Was it were they temperate? Like was it warm? Like like is it like if you were going to go to the, there to go swimming yeah. or on the beach? Yeah. Yeah, we we had we had good weather in uh, the Canaries. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's see, that's how I was dressed in the Canaries. It was it was cool. It was nice weather. It was warm. Where's Santa Cruz? That was in um, Tenerife. Tenerife, okay. Yeah, yeah, and there, there's one of the volcanoes in the background, or or a hill nowadays. Um, yeah, but I, on one of the islands, I counted just where I was and looking on the horizon, I counted 15. Um, and, and there's a lot of black lava or black sands beaches in some of the areas. Those are the cruise ships, yeah. I guess, in the harbor at one of the yes. islands. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when there's other cruise ships in the port, oh my God, the town is just packed with bodies, you know? <laughs> but so it was... It was nice when we were the only cruise ship around. Somebody has just uh, commented here. Wait, hold on. Uh, Janice, uh, Vieja Cumbre erupted just recently. It was a beautiful eruption, lasted over 90 days. That must oh, I didn't know that. They're in the Canaries. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Cool. Glad I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. And this is a harbor I, on one of the islands. I pitch, just picked the picture up. Yeah, the, a, the time. a lot, a lot of sailboats in that hole in in the Canaries and also over in Spain. And you know, 
A lot of sailing. Yeah. And then you went from the Canaries to Morocco. Yes, we went to Morocco. And I had been to Morocco, I guess, from 69 to 72. We, we would always sail in and out of Morocco. And one time in 71, I lived in Agadir for a month. And in 72, I lived in Tangier for three months. So it was nice when we sailed into Agadir because it was I, I was familiar with it and it was a town that we used to enjoy going to because there was horse riding stables and it was a very modern town. Uh, there had been there was there is a hill in Agadir, and the town used to be at the top of that hill until 1964. There was an earthquake and it wiped it out. And as a kid, I used to with Annie Broker and two Swedish guys, um, Ulf Ronquist and Håkan Johansson of Standard Vitamins, uh, we used to climb that hill to the very top. And looking at it now as an adult, I'm like, that's quite a climb. <laughs> I think I have pictures of that, but we'll get to that in just a second here. Right? Okay. Yeah. But now up there, they have, they've cleaned it up and there's, you know, camels up there and donkeys up there and, jewelry sales in souvenirs and stuff like that while well, they're in the middle of fixing it all up to actually put a uh, a, a medina medina up there or um for more shopping and stuff like I, that. I joked i said janice is checking out her uber ride <laughs> that was offered they don't then you know the, the little little horse was her uber ride <laughs> yeah he kept she's telling going, me that's for me <laughs> no, he kept telling me to get on. I'm like, no, I'm too big for that. And he's like, no, no, get on. Anyway, I'm not a cruel person, so I'm not going to get on a little horse like that. No, your, your feet would have almost touched the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would have looked ridiculous. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, go ahead, and then who's this? Ah, uh, this is Balcassim Farage. Balcassim was Algerian, and when we sailed into Al Algiers in 1969, he worked for our ch ship's chandler or something like that as a translator. And he really liked the people on the ship, and he was probably just 21 years old. Anyway, he ends up joining the ship, and within a year, he was a Class 8 auditor. He did the original Class 8 course when we were in Corfu, became a class 8 CS, and even became Commodore Staff 5. So he was like the top tech person wow. under Hubbard in uh, 1970, 71, or something like that. Anyway, so he later on, after his Sea Org days and so forth, he ended up moving to Agadir. He was in Los Angeles or Redondo Beach for a long time doing imports and exports. But anyway, he retired in Agadir. So here he is. Um, he, he met the ship and he had a friend who was, ran a tour company. So he arranged a van to hold all of us. And they took us on a tour of Agadir. And he came along with us and, you know, explained different things to us. So that, that was a lot of fun because he was familiar with, he knew Lynn, he knew Lizzie, he knew Stu. He, he knew Louise and myself and, and Spanky. He knew Spanky because he'd come to some of the events I'd put on at Spanky's house when we did some celebrations of life when he was in Los Angeles. So and you, stayed, yeah. you stayed in touch with them all these years after you left the Sea Org, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So he was very excited we were coming, and he he took such good care of us. So it, that was good. And there yeah. he is right there on the right with Spanky, and then you guys somewhere in Agadir, right? Yeah, we were in Agadir. He, we, he took us to a mosque and to, you know, another shopping market, and he took me. There we are down at the at the bay. And these are all these are the people that he knew from the tour, um, but he took me back to the hotel we stayed in. I'm going to in, get to that in just a minute. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, I'll I'll wait for that. 
Because I was going to show this is the hill, right? That you were talking yeah, about earlier. Yeah, yeah you're, that's you jumped the ahead. Hill. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'm that's the hill. And I look at it now and I'm like, I used to climb that thing. I used to start at the bottom and go all the way up and run all the way down because it, there is a road that goes up there, but that's a longer route than climbing up. And that's where the town used to be up there on the top. Yes, until 64 earthquake. Wow. Yeah, and, and that's a picture of the harbor that they had on a billboard up there just showing what it used to look like. And that piece that's sticking out, going straight out to the ocean, sometimes we had to dock on there, otherwise we're over on the left. Uh, there's another picture, I believe, in here where I show that. But we had a storm once and swells of water were coming in and just banging us against the dock and we were breaking ships lines and other ships had already moved out. And we ended up after breaking several lines, Commodore finally was like, get out of port. Let's go out to anchor. And that's. <laughs> go ahead and start to tell that story again. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. So this is, this is hotel modern. It did not look like this in 1971. It looked modern <laughs> and what well tell what was it tell, but, tell in 1971 what was it in 1971 the ship was going to go to spain and hubbard couldn't go to spain so it was decided he would go ashore in agadir while the ship went to spain and so the messengers and the aides all moved ashore so hubbard and mary sue were at a house in agadir and we got to stay at hotel modern it had just been built. There'd been no customers there. So it was brand new. And we filled the whole place. And this is the hotel where Suzette Hubbard wrote this cute little poem that I still remember. She, she and I were roommates. And, she, and we had bars on our windows on the back. So she wrote a poem about... Um, with bars on our windows and locks on our door, we're even chained to the cold bare floor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the messengers, which were, you know, we all were there and not with Hubbard. And because we weren't with Hubbard, he had us being the stewards for the aides. So every meal we had to serve the aides and wash the dishes and help with the food preps. And we'd, we'd make milkshakes, and uh, the the local boy who ran the front desk, his name was Habib, and he would always try and make milkshakes with us. But um, when I went in there and I was talking, well, the guy who ran the place didn't speak English, so Balkasim was translating. And I went in there and I said, oh, yeah, I was here in 1971. Here, the restaurant was here. The kitchen was here. And down the hall is the bathrooms, which were holes in the ground. And the ships, for us to stay there, the ship's carpenter built toilets seats for us to sit on <laughs> so that we didn't have to just squat over the holes in the ground. Anyway, the guy... The, the current worker there was pretty shocked that I remembered all this stuff. And then I go, oh, and under the stairs, and I pointed to, and I said, Habib lived in there. And he said, Habib only died a couple of years ago. So he'd been at the hotel like 50 years. Wow. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, here's a picture of you in front. Of the, you just took this picture. And that's yeah. you, what, 50 years later, over 50 years later. Yeah, 52 years later. And then I think this is inside, right? Yeah, that, that's the front lobby. Yeah, that's the front lobby. And go, you go up the stairs to the second floor. And if you go to the back in the middle there, that's the hallway to where um, our room was. Well, we had several rooms there, but my room, yeah. That's yeah, that was, too, that right? was Yeah, that was the dining room. That They've got some petition up there that wasn't there before. That must have been of, something. And a bunch of junk. What was it like seeing someplace you hadn't been in fifty years? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was strange. It was it was very different because those walls weren't there. Yeah. But uh, there was dining room tables there, you know, and now it was just a bunch of junk. 
Did you bring back memories of things that happened while you were there? Yeah, well, that's where I brought up, you know, the kitchen's in here. We washed the dishes there. We made our milkshakes here and, you know, yeah. yeah. And then this is the jour and oui, which is in French, in English, is uh, day and night. And that was a restaurant we used to go to on our liberties. And they had the greatest strawberries and cream. And so I had to go back there and the inside had been re redone. But I remember eating a hamburger there. Their hamburgers were great. But after I took a bite of one of my hamburgers and the tomato fell out, I, w- I was thankful that it fell out and that the cockroach on it was was whole and it wasn't a half, <laughs> it wasn't half eaten. <laughs> oh, God. So I never had a hamburger there again. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. And then this here, this is the, I remember this wall. This wall was fr- near the dry dock. And again, the dry dock um, had bathrooms, which were holes in the ground. And uh, so we used to walk along this wall to go into town to go to a bathing house to take our showers. Um, yeah. And, and then um, you went to Casablanca and I took, I put this photo up because you found Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca, right? <laughs> yeah, we did. But you know, apparently that, that Casablanca movie was all done in Hollywood on set. It was, it was. Yeah. The whole story and so there. even, there's a hotel there called Rick's cafe, which was not in the movie, but it's there and people are all excited about it. And it's on the tourist stop and you know, yeah. Yeah. And then this this was our tour guide in uh, Casablanca, a wonderful man. He was blind, and the bus driver or his son would lead him around, but he spoke perfect English. He'd gone to school in Scotland and England, and uh, very knowledgeable and amazingly respected by everybody he saw, it because he had actually done the, I don't know what you call it, but he'd gone to Mecca. And uh, he was respected by all. And he took us into the mosque, the um, King Hussein II mosque there. And we actually got to go through the whole thing. And he explained things to us. And he, he said the reason why women pray in the back of men is because it's out of respect. The men are supposed to be there for prayer not to look at women's butts if the women were praying in front of the men. (laughs) So that's why the women are put behind or put on on balconies so that the men's attention is on prayer and not on the women. And we went to a park where um, kids play and it was just packed with pigeons. And this is a, a, a water man. He has a goat skin with water in it and you know, you're supposed to pay him for water. Okay. And that's Cedar, Tom and I in the same spot. And then this this is a butcher shop, as you can see. I was and, thinking, like in Casablanca, you probably saw markets and things like that, right? Oh, yeah. And, and in Agadir. And actually in Agadir, across the road from Hotel Modern uh, was where they had a chicken where you went to buy your chickens and they had cages with live chickens in it. And in the back was a big a, a area with the, like a pony wall and three men were back there because you go in there and you pick out which chicken you want and it's handed to the man in the back and he just does took care of it. <laughs> he took care of it and did everything. And then it's put in a bag and you, Put your pile on the on the ground on the sidewalk while you get everything, and then you go pick up your bag off the ground of chicken and walk off. <laughs> I know. I mean, in the West, we're spoiled because we just go to the grocery store and buy our chicken already ready to cook and prepared. But like uh, people who grew up on farms and here in the United States and also in other countries, you pick your chicken out and they take care of it right then and there. Pluck the feathers yeah. and away you go. It makes and- you appreciate really what you're eating. <laughs> Well, you know it's fresh. 
<laughs> where here in the U.S., you don't know if it's fresh and you don't even know if it's a chicken. True, true. But, but you don't also you don't also know if you're eating your pet chicken, you know, Henrietta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay so these are some more pictures of like the market i just put these all together here yeah right? yeah yeah it's a very colorful marketplace with all the fruit and vegetables now um this guy is making coffee did they have good coffee I, is morocco known for their coffee or no i don't drink coffee so i can't answer that question okay. I was just wondering. But, but this about, guy, that guy yeah, made great, he squeezed fresh pomegranate right there in front of Ooh. me. It was wow. really good. But then as I'm drinking it, I'm looking at it and thankfully, well, he put it in glasses and then he poured it into a plastic cup for me. But I'm looking at his washing system and see that bucket that had soap yeah. suds in it. And as ah. I, after, I, after I drank mine, I'm watching him make it for someone else. I'm like, Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> now, you didn't eat anything, though, in, in, in uh, Morocco, did you? Only if it was cooked. Right. Okay. Yeah. Except for that pomegranate juice. <laughs> okay. Now, is it are these dates? Yes. Yeah, and I was going to say, they must have a lot of dates there, too. And that's, I love dates. You know, like when you were in La Quinta in California, I mean, they had you know, of course, you had a date packing plant that you made into a movie studio, but you can get great dates out there. They're delicious. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then I just put together some shots on the ship. So go ahead. Tell, tell people. Yeah. Well, this, this one of the ports, well, several of the ports that was so far away from the town, we had to take buses or this port, we actually walked because we were frustrated with the bus system. And then coming back, Tracy and I decided to take the the uh, boat taxi back, and it was and it was cheaper than the bus. It was like four euros, and it was faster. So well, I'm sitting there, and I I took that photo because I kind of liked it. Yeah, it's a nice photo. Yeah. And then here's more pictures on the ship. This is a but the the ship photographer took this, right? Yeah, this was a group hug. Yeah. <laughs> And that and was that, like at one of the restaurants, right, on the ship? Yeah, that was at one of the steak steak restaurants on the ship. Yep. And again, that's Stuart in the blue shirt. That's uh, Mike Laws in the red shirt. And Cheryl yep. is between them. And there's you. And yep. then uh, Tracy sitting down in the green and Spanky. Yep, that's right. Okay. And, and then this is, go ahead, explain what this is. I've got several photos from here. Yeah. So Lenny and Roby... You know, I mentioned earlier they'd been married for um, 50 years, so they wanted to renew their vows. So they asked me if, if I would officiate. So I agreed. I said, sure. And Lizzie had been their, their maid of honor in the original wedding, so she was there and stood up with them for the little ceremony we did. And because I'm not – well, I used to be a minister in Scientology, but because I'm not an <laughs> official or anything, I'm not an Internet um, official. I just said, and the power is not granted in me. Um, anyway, so we, we just had fun doing a renewal of their vows and the crew had, the ship had given them a cake and we were all there just kind of celebrating their 50 years together. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's on the ship. Yeah. That was the first night. Well, that was, we left Lisbon the next day was a day at sea. And then we did that that evening. Got it. Then this, this is Halloween. Uh, yeah, you can see the devil's ears. Yeah, well, I was going to ask, where'd you guys get the costumes? Did somebody bring them or did the ship have them? Well, Al and Jackie bought their costumes with them, but Al got his little angel wings when we were in town at a Halloween store. And then Sita went to town and got her devil um, headband and got That's little her devil on the right. Yeah. yeah, and got little devil um, ears for horns for Cheryl and I. Yeah. And then there's the angel. Al was the angel with his little halo and wings with the two hippies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the devil ears were put on Lizzie. 
Okay, great. And yeah. then from Morocco, you you headed to Spain. Now, t tell people because I don't have pictures of everything. Where where did you go in Spain? Because you went several places, right? Yeah, we we went up um, on the Atlantic side of Spain and went to Cadiz. And then we sailed through the Straits of Gibraltar, which you can see there between where it says Morocco and then above that Spain. That's the Straits of um, Gibraltar. And we sailed through there. When we can were you see, the, Can you see the coast? Can you see Spain and Morocco as you're going through? Yes. Or was yes. it at night? Yeah, at nighttime. They okay. went through at night. And there's actual shipping lanes that you have to stay in, you know, to avoid crashes and so forth. When we were on the Apollo and we didn't want to be found and followed we used to go through there with lights out <laughs> anyway uh but we we then went into the mediterranean that's where we went up the coast of spain and um and then you can see the little island there ibiza we went there we missed valencia and then ended in barcelona you went to mallorca too right yes right yeah. Oh, and that, that's me waving, waving from my palace in Mallorca. <laughs> <laughs> and this was, this is Ibiza. And up there is the old town. And it's, you know, of course it's a fort. And then it's a beautiful, just absolutely beautiful little old town in there with little streets and beautiful houses and Airbnbs in there and, Great scenery. If if anyone's interested, um, Cheryl posted some great shots on her Facebook page. But yeah, people, yeah. if they want to see more photos, go to my Facebook page, go to Cheryl Detchers, go to Jacqueline O'Shaughnessy's. Uh, you know, we've all been posting great photographs as, uh, throughout the trip. Now, Ibiza and Mallorca are known as Jet Setter. Uh, locations with the nightclubs and the beaches yeah. and the parties. So did you see any of that at all? No, not the parties because that's at nighttime and we were sailing each day at four o'clock. Okay. So, yeah. All right. And this? Yeah, this is my palace here on the left. That's where I was waving from. And and the Romans that actually... Huh? You have a palace? Damn, I only have a castle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then also, I was going to say, Roberto is in the house and he says, lights out, very risky. <laughs> <laughs> is that my good buddy, Roberto? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see pictures of him in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next one is. Yeah, that's me. That's probably Cadiz. The streets were very narrow in Cadiz. I was going to say, you had a lot of narrow streets in Europe, in the, in, right? You know, not, yeah. Not real wide. Yeah. It was more like for walking. People walked everywhere. And then some other places that are more modern, you know, you could get a, a coach through there, <laughs> a horse wet and wagon. <laughs> yeah. Looks like somebody's interrupting your selfie or your picture or something. Well, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's me kind of jumping in front of the girls who were sitting waiting for a photo at the fountain. <laughs> okay. I don't know where that is. You probably do. Uh, I don't remember. Okay. Somewhere in Spain. Yeah, somewhere in Spain. Is Same this Cadiz as or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. I heard yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. Yep. N another another castle. Oh, the pastries. Oh, my God. <laughs> Unbelievable. And and this here is actually, we went into, it was, um, Mike, Mike Laws works on his Spanish. And he was so funny. He was, he was pointing to things going, uno, dos, uno, dos. And so <laughs> the lady is like, okay, she's going to get one. And then she goes, oh, he wants two. And then, oh, no, he wants one. And. And he kept going through saying uno dos. And I finally got Michael, uno dos. <laughs> oh. He says you want two dos, yeah. yeah. And then we were teasing because his Spanish was El Forco or El, El Knife, you know. Yeah. That's funny. So, Here's more of the pastries. 
Yeah, more of the pastries. And these are some shots on the on the boat, right? On the ship. Yeah, that was it was a beautiful sunset when we were leaving Morocco to cross over to Spain. Yeah. There we are. The wind is blowing, but the sunset was beautiful. And then we've got one more here. Tom, uh, Tom and Sita. Sita. Yeah. Yeah. And this is an Ibiza, it says right at the top. This is yep. a potential photographer for the ship. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. They su they superimpose the background, but um, that's me, then Michael, Cheryl, and Michael's girlfriend Tracy. Yeah, and Michael's uno dos. <laughs> uno uno dos. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's a great guy. We've known him. I've known him since he was like 16, 17, 18 years old, or whatever. He used to be in Religious Technology Center. Uh, when Miscavige took over. And uh, so that, that's when I first met Mike was uh, up at the Int base up in Gilman Hot Springs. And he's yeah. extremely successful in his field since he's left the sea organization. Um, he, actually, he actually started off homeless. He, yeah. he had trouble holding jobs after the sea org and was homeless. And then he had this idea as he's sitting in his car, that's all he had. And he had this idea and he's built it up and built it up to where it is a major concern operation now, which is, um, you know, well it's, done to him. Yeah, it's Echo Works, right? Is that the name of the company, Echo Works? Yes. He yes. basically does environmental cleanup of oil, of like oil rigs, oil spills, oil barges, all sorts of things. And he's down in Texas, and he he's, does it environmentally safe. And he actually salvages a lot of the oil out of that. And then he ha sells off the oil as well. But right. uh, he, he has a, a, he's highly respected, very successful in this business. And like you said, Janice, he was homeless when he left the Sea Org. Yes. Yeah. And he's done very well. He's yeah. actually going to be on our show. Um, I've just got to schedule that with him. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And then, of course, you hit Barcelona. That was the end of the cruise, right? Yeah, the end of the cruise, but we spent two days in Barcelona after the cruise. And, and this um, is that famous cathedral that they're never, they've been building for a million years, right? Yeah, <laughs> and it's absolutely amazing. And what did you do? Did it, you guys take a bus or what did you, what, yeah, what did we, you do, a tour? We did a hop on, hop off. And that yeah. way you can, you we go, always go to the top and that way you can see and then you can go, oh, I want to go see this. So you get off go see it and then you can walk to the next stop or back to the old stop and get back on and we spent the whole day just you know getting on and off and visiting different things in Boston. i want to point out to people that is the best thing to do when you go to a city and you don't know your way around i have done that the first time i did that was in london when i went to london by myself on vacation to tour i did the hop on hop off double decker bus you get on the top and you get the best photographs because there's no cars or trees in the way. And it actually gives you a lay of the land. And like you said, Janice, you can hop off at the Louvre in Paris because I've done it in Paris. And yeah. then when you're ready and done there, you just hop on the next bus that comes by. And it's fantastic. I've done it in I've done it in Rome, Paris, yeah. London. I've done it in Japan and Tokyo. It's it is by far the best way to see a city if you're by yourself. If you've got somebody who's going to show you around, that's great. But those hop on, hop off buses, first rate all the time, all the oh, way. Oh yeah, and they're only like twenty five to thirty five bucks, and you know it's, it's yeah an for the day, whole day. Thing. Yeah, because we did that in Las Palmas and Barcelona. Yeah. Anyway, they're yeah. awesome. So as a travel tip for anybody who's traveled who's not been somewhere, it gives you the lay of the land. And that's the first thing I do when I go someplace that I've never been before is they have a hop on hop bus. I do it because then I know where I'm going. And then I remember yeah. when I was in Paris, I just got on after my three days in Paris and I just rode around the city at night just to see the lights. You know, I'd already knew where everything was, but it's just a really great experience. Anyway, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. And, and, and they then, give you a map and you also have headphones and you yeah, know, there's so somebody you telling you where map. you are. Yeah. 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 Anyway. And then here you are in front of that, uh, the, the famous cathedral, right? That's Cheryl, yep. you and Sita. Yes. And then where's that? <laughs> this was uh, the wall, the old wall to the original city of Barcelona. And they have these men dressed up in costume 
that uh, we posed with. And then they, they actually did a, a change of gods. I was talking to one of the gods, and there he is. And then you start hearing the drumming, and he just suddenly runs off because he's late for the march. And then he runs down, and we're like, what's going on? Let's go see him. We're following. And then that's where they do a whole little changing of the gods to uh, the wall. And that's okay, Roberto. Okay, then who's this? That's Roberto. That, <laughs> Roberto is is a constant. He's a regular viewer of our channel. He's a member of our channel. Uh, he's a wonderful guy. He lives in Barcelona with his wife and family. Yeah. And uh, when he heard you were coming to Barcelona, he said, hey, we should meet up, right? Absolutely. And I am so glad we did. He is such a wonderful person. I mean, so, so caring and so friendly. And he came to our Airbnb and hung out with everybody there. And, and then Lin, when he was leaving, he was going to take Linny and Roby and make sure they got back to their hotel. And he did a little dance with uh, Linny and Roby and me as they were singing Happy Trails. And he got on the end and we're kicking <laughs> up our legs. And he's just a wonderful guy. He works on a, uh, on a ship, a private yacht. Yeah. With wife and his sister he's it's and he knows his way around Barcelona and he was like if any of you need any help just let me know and the, and so the next morning actually Linny got sick and uh Roby's like what's the contact information from Roberto and Roberto got them to the emergency room and made sure they were taken care of because they were staying an extra two days while we were the rest of us were all flying out so it was very helpful having him there well, he's in the chat. If you can see, you can say, oh, Hi, Roberto. Says, How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. That's him right here. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's a he's a peeling master. He's one of our members of our channel. If you guys want to become a member of our channel, just go down below and kick, click the join and follow the directions. But uh, Roberto's a great guy. He's actually from Mexico, but he lives in Barcelona in Spain. So. Yeah. Anyway, thanks very much, Roberto. We really appreciate that. Yes. And then thank you. And then you guys got an Airbnb, right? When you were yeah, in uh, Barcelona? We got an Airbnb with um, two, four, six rooms, seven rooms, seven rooms. Seven and bedrooms. Seven bedrooms and four bathrooms. They were small little bathrooms of just a small shower, toilet, and a sink, you know. Um, it was, you know, cramped in there, but, and the little sink, you know, maybe six inches by a foot. <laughs> But it, it, it was it was fun for all of us just, you know, the last night to hang out in the kitchen and, you know, just be there together, having a great time before we all started catching flights the next day. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's, a, that's a great way to travel when you're staying together. It's great. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, this is the end. This is uh, you guys uh, having a cheers at the end. Is that right? Yes. Cheers to everybody. <laughs> and I don't even drink beer. That that was Tom's. That was Tom's two beers. <laughs> well, that's that's great. That's a that's a. You sounds like you had a great time, Janice. Uh, we have a uh, Catherine Garrison yeah. says Aloha, Mark. Uh, Mas Marvi Hawaiian shirt. Janice, you look phenomenal, girl. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. We Thank appreciate you. that. Oh, and you know what though, and. You know, there was a there's an independent auditor who also lived in Barcelona that had wanted to meet up with me, and because someone had told him I was going there, but I then find, he says, "Well, I'm I'm leaving on the sixth of November to go back to the U.S." Well, he was on the same flight as me, so I so he came over to me at the airport, and then he was only three rows in front of me on the plane. And uh, he's he's going back to the U.S. to do some review audits. He's an independent. Hmm. So that was interesting. Well, I was going to tell everybody, we're going to do a giveaway of one of Janice's autographed books. So don't leave. Go ahead and get in the chat. And uh, if you would like to receive an autographed copy of Janice's book, here it is right here. Commodus Messenger Book One, A Child Adrift in the Scientology Sea Organization. Or if you want book two, either one. Uh, we're going to do a giveaway. So just get in the chat and say, book me or merch me or whatever you want to say. And we're just going to randomly pick somebody in the chat. We'll do a countdown and uh, you can get in there and uh, 
and hopefully win a book and then we will send it off to you. So I'm going to, while you guys, um, we need the chat to blow up. It takes a little bit of a delay and we'll do that here in just a moment, right? In the meantime, I wanted to let everybody know we have a new merchandise item that just dropped, which is our G'day Mates hoodie, okay? <laughs> it's uh, all cotton. You can get it in black or navy. And on the front, it's got our koala in a Hawaiian shirt saying G'day Mates. And then on the back, it's got our Scientology stories peeling the onion. And it comes in various sizes all the way up to 3 or 4X. And uh, anyway, it's, it's getting cold everywhere. So if you're interested in getting one of our hoodies, just go down below. You can see below the comments. It's listed right there. Click on it. You can order it from our, our merchandise site as well as other things. And it'll make a good Christmas gift. Christmas is right around the corner. So I wanted to mention that to anybody who's interested in uh, that new merchandise item. In the meantime, uh, people are getting in the chat, and Janice, okay. I will let you count down from five, and then I will randomly pick somebody to uh, get a copy of your book. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! I want to be ASP. Book me. I want to be, oh, I want to be I want to be ASP. <laughs> That's a good one. Congratulations. You just won an autographed copy of Janice's book. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is I'll show you what you need to do is you just need to uh, email Janice at JaniceGillumGrady at gmail.com. Email her your name and your shipping address where you want the book shipped to. And also, if you want it personalized, she'll personalize the autograph. So just write in the uh, email to her what you want put inside the book, and she'll get that shipped off to you. I want to be uh, SP, okay? Well, you know what? You are now an SP. <laughs> you don't have to want to be. You are one because you're reading my book. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So congratulations to everybody who participated in that giveaway. And we, we appreciate all of you. And uh, we hope you enjoy the book. And again, if, if somebody else, if you want to buy the book, again, it's in our merch site. You can buy an autographed copy of either one of the books, plus all the other merchandise that we have available in there as well. And like I said, Christmas is right around the corner. All right, so we're about to do questions. If you guys got a question, please write the word question in front of it. It makes it easiest for us to star. Or if you've got a nice comment, you can put it in there as well. And then we'll get wrapped up here, and I'll go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, if you have any questions for Janice or for me, we'll, we could, we'll talk about anything. So not just the cruise. If you want to ask us Scientology questions or anything like that, uh, you can. So here, I'll start with the first one here. And this is from Peter Anderson. Question, is that Spanky who's credited with introducing COS to Priscilla and John Travolta? Yes, we answered that question already. I'm sorry about yeah. that. Thanks, Peter, for that question. Then we've got Vernon Salvatierra. Question mark, have you gone on a trip with Janice and her friends? I have. Uh, we went to, um, the first time I went on one of the cruises, we were in the Caribbean. And we went to uh, you know, the Bahamas and all that. And then we did a cruise uh, before COVID, about a year before COVID. And we went to Cuba out of Miami. No, Mark, it was just months before, a month, two months before COVID. Yeah, and uh, but we went to Cuba out of Miami, um, and we went to Cuba, to uh, two ports in Cuba, and then we went to Haiti, and then uh, I think to, we went to the Bahamas again, or I can't remember, but uh, a private island or whatever, and then we came back. So, yes, no, I've done that, and we've done other trips over the years, too, but those are the last two cruises that I went on. But somebody's got to hold down the fort, so, you know. You were stuck yeah, with me for but, three weeks. <laughs> but we are we are working out planning. doing planning a three day cruise out of California, probably out of uh, L.A. Which is a good point, which I want to mention right now. We are. I've been researching it. If you're interested in possibly doing like a three day, it'd be over a weekend, like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday cruise out of Long Beach, California with us, like on Carnival Cruise Lines or whatever. Just email me that you're interested and then we'll work out um, we're going to work out dates that might work out for the most people and all that we're thinking about you know sometime early in the spring not too not too long from now because it's warm down in mexico if we go down there but uh, it'll be fun it's it's mainly going to be a get together type cruise where we can talk and all that but we'll also have you know hit some ports of call and uh, but it's really a you know
know, sit around, socialize, drink, eat, drink, and be merry. But if you're interested, just email me at messengerondutymf at gmail.com. You don't have to commit. Just just let me know if they're, if you're interested and how many people might be interested. And then when we get the details worked out with um, our cruise agent, uh, then we'll, we'll separately email you. So that way it's not broadcast all over the place in terms of when and where we're going. We're just going to do it to the people that are interested in it. And of course, Osa, if you want to come along, you know, you're welcome to. Uh, we'll be able to spot you. Uh, I know John Poe from Poe and the Go. He and his wife want to go. And he's a former police chief. So we'll, we'll be looking out if anything happens. Anyway, go ahead, Janice. <laughs> yeah, we just... We just don't want to promote it so that the PIs show up on our cruise, but yeah. we're not doing anything so they can come and have fun if they do manage to slip through. <laughs> that's right. Anyway, uh, so let's go on to the next one here. Um, so I answered that question and this is a question for Janice. Uh, question to Janice, what was your best highlight from the trip? My best highlight that's from Danielle, by the way. Hi, Danielle. Yeah, you know, I think the best highlight was seeing Balkasim and spending the day with him and the way he took care of us. And, you know, it was an old, familiar place for me. So That's Agadir, great. Agadir. Yeah, and then um, Tom and Sita, they told me their favorite port that they went to. They loved Lisbon. They want to go yeah. back to Lisbon. They said it's like San Francisco without all the dirt and stuff in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Lots to see, lots to do, great people, great food, and they really loved uh, Lisbon. So that was theirs. Okay, we'll go on to the next question here. And this is from a Love Who Kitchen. Hey, how you doing? It's good to see you in the chat. Uh, question, is Spanky retired now? Um, then if she's, if she's got medical issues, wasn't she the fan mail queen of Hollywood? She is not retired. She's still working and loves doing what she does. And I don't think she's going to stop until they, uh, till she drops. She's going to just keep working. Yeah, Spanky's awesome. We'll have her on hopefully at some point too to talk about Celebrity Center, and, and we'll see. Um, but anyway, we'd love to have her on. Uh, next thing here, uh, I want to be an SP. What's the email again? It's Janice Gillum Grady at gmail.com. That's Janice Gillum Grady at gmail.com. We need your nope. name. What? Go ahead. Note the two L's. Yeah. Janice Gillum Grady at gmail.com. And, and we need your name. We need your, your shipping address. And then also anything that you want to have her, you know, put in and when she autographs it too. So uh, just, just email Janice and she gets it out, you know, like almost the next day. So you'll get it pretty quickly. So uh, anyway, that's where that is. All right, everybody. Any other questions? Go ahead and get in the questions and uh, we'll get to them here. Uh, oh, here's an important question uh, from Matt Darby. Janice, are you single? <laughs> I I was widowed just nearly two years ago. Yeah. So, and the answer is yes, she is single now. You know, okay. So, yeah, you're available. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not looking. <laughs> unless anyway, unless you can asking. unless you can pay for my cruises on the on the Ritzy cruise lines. <laughs> Okay, great. Thanks very much for that, Matt Darby. Any other questions anybody has? Janice, do you have any other comments or anything that you want to talk about? Well, someone's asking about the dogs. Let me see if I can get a video of them right there. Oh, there's one sleeping. Um, yeah, they're just crushed out on my couch. One on the couch, they, one on the floor. They were well taken care of while you were gone, right? Yes. Yeah, they but they were very happy to see me. One of them, I I I can't I text the person watching the house and the dogs and I said, open the side gate so when I come home I can come in through the back. Because I knew one of them was gonna pee everywhere in excitement. And he sure did. So I was lucky I was outside. <laughs> I just good. have to go grocery shopping and come back and he gets so excited to see me. Yeah. All right, we have another question, Karen Garrison. Question, what was your favorite vacation that you took with your lovely husband, Paul, Janice? Wow. You did a lot. Um, oh, yeah, but, you know, we did a great one to Italy in uh, 2019. We went oh, yeah, with, with your friends. friends. Yeah, and actually, 
that couple, the wife I'd known her since I was 12 and she passed away three weeks before my husband did. So, and it was, a, we did this trip a year before they both passed away. So yeah, a year and a half, but, uh, it, to Italy, we had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, let's tell people what we have coming up. All right. Uh, question, fond memory of your dad. Hold on. I got another question. Question mark, fond memory of your dad. Yeah, I did a, a video. You haven't seen it yet, Janice, on my dad. Uh, John yeah. Poe, co-host co with me, John Poe. And um, fondest memory of my dad. He's a veteran. So today's Veterans Day in the United States. And, uh, you know, he was 23 years in the United States Navy. And, uh, you know, my dad, I always got along with him. You know, he we had to disconnect when uh, he went. He left Scientology. I had to disconnect. I was sorry about that, but I was really happy. I was able to reconnect before he passed away. Uh, but my dad was always smart and uh, great. And I always looked up to him as a naval officer when I was a kid. He was like a rock star to me. So anyway, so anyway, the, the happy veterans to all the veterans that are out there as well. OK, what I was going to say is what we've got coming up is we're going to be doing more interviews. And, you know, um, you know, we're going to pick up where uh, we left off. Um, Janice, we've got people that we want to continue interviewing, people like Steve Kanan and um, uh, Apostate Alex is going to interview me again. And uh, Mark Headley, well, I did an interview with him a little over a week ago, and he wants to do a series with me uh, regarding the international base. And yep. I'm going to be doing shows with Karen Della Carriere, Mitch Brisker, and Jeffrey Augustine. And Janice, you're going to do shows, right? Yes, and uh, Claire and I have to finish off what we didn't know as parents when we left the, right. the Sea Org. And um, yeah, and Scott Campbell is going to come on with me and we're going to talk about the free winds. Scott Campbell, tell, her, tell everybody who he is. Well, Scott was uh, in the engine room on the ship. He was one of the original recruiters uh, for the free winds while the free winds was being purchased. And he was there with me during the maiden voyage and... Remains a good friend today. He lives down in California, and we stay in touch. Yeah, and we're going to continue telling the history of Scientology and also, as, you know, calling people out on the abuses. I've been calling right. Miscavige out recently as well. I don't think he's long for this world. I don't I don't know what's going on, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, so there's lots of videos about that. We're going to do videos about celebrities and Celebrity Center, right, Janice? Yeah, we, we're going to do one. I've already got the photos together. I just got to schedule it. But we're going to do one doing the original startup of Celebrity Center. Uh, I've been given some of the original orders of the day and uh, some early photographs and stuff. So that's going to be a fun one to cover my mother's motivation and what she accomplished. Yeah, and Janice's mother is the one who really pushed, you know, got celebrities going in Scientology. And, um, you know, she's the one, uh, she's got a lot of information about that. So I think you'll enjoy all of that. All righty. Well, I'd like to ask everybody, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. If you think these videos are valuable, we really would appreciate it. We're at 9,400 subscribers now. It's slowed down adding new subscribers recently, but we'd like to push up over 10,000. Uh, and that allows us to then do, you know, fundraisers for the Aftermath Foundation, things like that. So if you haven't already subscribed, just hit that subscription button. Nobody else knows that you're a subscriber and uh, we would really appreciate it. Also, if you want to become a member of our channel like Roberto, just click on the join button and then we have different levels of membership and uh, you get like as a peeling master, you actually get one on ones with us once a month. And uh, that's how we we started talking to Roberto and everything. So if you want to know more about us and get you know closer, uh, just click on that join button and become a member. If you've got any questions that we haven't covered, or if you have any comments on this video or Janice's trip, just ask us in the comments section down below. Uh, we check the comments and questions all the time, so you won't be missed. Finally, I've got my other channel that we've been advertising or that we've been broadcasting on, and it's just, just a fun channel. It's Mark Fisher's Las Vegas Travel and More. So if you would, please subscribe to that too. It's at M Fisher LV. That's at M Fisher LV. I would really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to be doing more uh, travel related stuff. 
And uh, it's just a fun channel to get away from all the Scientology crap all the time. So anyway, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a give it a try. Check out the videos and uh, click on that as well. Janice, have you got anything else? I've got one more thing. Two things. Go oh, Go I got two Go things. One is someone asked about seasickness on the ship. I don't know of anyone that got seasick. Those ships these days are so big and have stabilizers that, yeah, it rolls, but I, I don't know of anyone getting seasick. They did have seasick bags, you know, in different areas, but I don't know of anyone. And I, I, I grew up on a ship for eight years, so yeah. it doesn't affect me. And then the other thing is make sure you rock slam that like button. That's right. Roxanne, that like it. It helps the algorithm. What that means is it gives YouTube an idea of what's popular and it pushes the videos out to people who normally don't watch these videos on this subject and it puts it on their page and then they check it out and then they find out about what's going on in Scientology, the abuses of this or that. So it's very helpful. It seems like a simple thing to do. Just click on it and uh, rock slam it, as Janice says, and uh, it helps helps. Uh, uh, get the word out. And then finally, I just want to mention, you can buy me a coffee and buy Janice a coffee. Just go down in the description down below. Um, rather than donating with Super Chats or anything like that, where YouTube takes 30%, buy us a coffee if you feel like it. Uh, it helps support the channel. It helps us do these things. And we would really appreciate it. Anything else, Janice, before we end off? I don't think so, but we'll be coming up with some more good stuff. So I hope you come back and uh, keep enjoying our channel. Thank and you. And we will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.